in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed When a man comes to tell you, I refuse bribery, I have been a diligent person, but every time my project is about to scale through, I go to sleep in the night and a stranger walks up to me and said, the same way I crush your father, I will do same. And he gets up in the morning and the destiny helper who should help him says, I, I can't remember, I can't remember inviting you to my office, walk away. You think that person is looking for a discussion? That you meet a family with untimely death, patterns of evil. Every year somebody must die. Now they come to you and say, Pastor, you claim you are a witness from Jesus. Will you allow my remaining children die? We are 11 now, we are four left. Everyone has died. It takes more than counseling. Someone shout power. Say it again, shout power. Listen, I come from a region where it is not easy and natural to rise from your lowly estate to a global standpoint. No, there are territorial horns that sit upon the destinies of men. They define the boundary of your growth. Once you cross a particular threshold, they say, thus far have you come. Some of you are like that, and you are taking your life casual. You are watching that you are not rising. Even those who have gone ahead of you, they went up and came down. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways. It says, through the greatness of thy power, Listen, even when it has to do with the ministry of prosperity, you see, it takes value and favor and all of those things to have resources. But the Bible says strong men retain wealth. Retaining wealth takes more than intellect. It takes power. Do you believe what you're hearing? Mama, Mama, if you do not access power the devil will rubbish your children one by one and children who should be prophets will become armed robbers prostitutes and hooligans just because of the bankruptcy of power you are a man you are a father and the devil is making nonsense out of your family if you access power from heaven one night when they are all sleeping you wear your priestly and prophetic regalia and begin to walk around your house sanitize your spiritual climate say unto god how terrible art thou in your ways through the greatness of thy power hallelujah listen to me the bible talks about jesus the son of the living god number one jesus was and is the word as the word incarnate when he came to the earth even though being the word it was not enough for him to be successful in ministry number two jesus encountered three prophets in his life who spoke over him one simeon the prophet two another prophetess three john the baptist 
And even at that, it still was not enough for him to excel in ministry. Listen carefully. Jesus submitted himself to mentorship. From age 12, he was in the temple learning the ropes of the law. Still, it was not enough for him. The Bible says when John brought him out of water, listen, the heavens opened. Is that true? And the spirit descended upon him. Still, it was not enough for him to do ministry. He went to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And your Bible says he returned in the power of the spirit. The power of the spirit. When he returned in the power of the spirit, many signs. In one day his fame spread abroad. Let me tell you ladies and gentlemen, hear me. You do not compel the attention of a generation by telling them stories. They have heard many of the things you are saying. The factor that compels is the power of God. He said for where the carcasses are, there the eagles will gather. It is not the location of your church. I don't believe that. It is not the state you are located in. I don't believe that. It's that there is no fire enough. There is no power enough. Genuine apostolic and prophetic power. It will draw men from the length and the breadth of the globe to come and see what God is doing. Listen to me. For more than a decade, with all due respect, I was in Zaria. For many of you who know Zaria, that, that, is, that, is, that is the center of Islamic activities. And people were coming from around the world, even with kidnapping. They would still endure from Lagos, fly to Abuja, take a golf and inconvenience themselves. If they would kidnap me, let them kidnap me, but let me get there. Not the best of hotel facilities. When people see genuine power, they will endure anything. I know you don't have AC yet. I know you don't have this yet. I know your sound system is not the best yet. People will forgive you a thousand times if they can have the consolation of power. Do you believe what I'm telling you? Don't do ministry without power. No, you will waste your time. Listen. I'm, I'm, I'm about to pray for you. There is, there is a volcano that is tearing up in this place this morning. Because for someone, listen, it's time for that mandate and that mantle. You have been carrying it, but there is no power. That's why God kept prohibiting you from starting a church. Prohibiting you from traveling for ministration. So that you don't embarrass yourself and bring reproach to the name of the Lord. Now hear me when I started ministry when God called me I started seeing a measure of the power of God in my life but I cried to God I said Lord this is not enough with the assignment you have shown me there needs to be a display of your power to the nations you are confronting people who are already familiar with spiritual activities some of them are herbalists themselves some of them are diviners themselves some of them are it is not new and I said Lord you must grant me access to this power I remember studying God's generals studying several people I remember studying the story of A.A. A. Allen who said he went to lock himself in the room and said, I am not coming out. He said, oh God, grant me genuine power from heaven. And God gave him seven instructions that if he kept, he would access power from heaven. The disciples thought it was just by a sincere heart. And they gathered around somebody who had a deaf and dumb spirit. And they labored for nothing and could not heal that person. When Jesus returned, they said, Master, why couldn't we do this? The bankruptcy of power has made many genuine people look fake. The bankruptcy of power has pushed many people with the purity of heart to the corridors of compromise. Because now you do not have 
the people who have been blessed by your life to support what you are doing so you will have to now start playing games and cutting corners to raise funds and all these kinds of things is this not a reed that has been forged out of fire can i tell you the bible says he makes his angels wings and his ministers flames no matter how mad a man is that man does not enter fire by mistake even though he's mad when he gets to fire he knows the difference listen i came here this morning just to charge you on the supernatural i it will be a costly assumption to assume that everybody here is tired of that natural realm but i know there are people for sure who are saying lord for the sake of my generation for the sake of the mandate upon my life you have called me as a financial apostle you have called me as a prophet to the nations you have called me as a deborah you have called me as an esther if you deny me access to power you have denied me access to that which sponsors the possibilities in my life listen to me according to scripture there are two ways to receive power two ways number one is by a direct encounter with the God of the Bible when people have a direct encounter with the God of the Bible among the many things they receive is power the second way which is a lot more generic by God impartation is the system of built within the economy of the body for spiritual possibilities to be transferred from person to person he said the how did he put it now the Lord sent a word to Jacob and it lightened upon Israel Apostle Paul was speaking to the church in Philippi and he said, Ye all are partakers of my grace. When a man has been so endowed by the Spirit, within the leadership, the boundary of the leadership of the Spirit, you are at liberty to allow from that which you have received to flow freely to those who genuinely desire to receive. Even though there are rules of reception, number one you must believe in the god that empowered that person number two you must believe in the person and the office of that man of god it's a he that receives a prophet in the name as touching that office you can receive a prophet in the name of your husband nothing will flow to you that's what the man of god was sharing here he said when he's in church help them please when you are in church he told his wife he said i am your pastor when we get home, you are in charge. That is family life. You've heard me say, I am a product of many anointings. I can spend the whole day telling you stories upon stories, moments of prophetic encounters in my life, and it has not stopped till tomorrow. I can tell you many graces in my life and where they came from the prophetic the miraculous the grace for influence wealth whatever it is these graces are not just for the benefit of the man of God the gifts of the spirit is for us to profit with that hear me for someone you are here and you are sincerely called but I'm telling you prophetically the missing link is that you have not accessed power from on high and the days that are coming I'm telling you this I'm not a bearer of bad news but many pastors are going to have to be forced to close down their churches because people will say I love you I respect you I've been with you for 10 years faithfully my life has not changed as much as I love you I'm thinking about the destiny and the future of my children too I will have to leave that is the truth The reason why we seem to have 
the manifestation of superstar Christianity as I call it is because many people have refused to pay the price with the spirit to access power so the few people who have now contended and carried power they supposedly look like superstars apostle Joshua Selman it is God's desire that as many did he not say for that promise is unto you and to your children when you do not press to access power you make those who carry to be at a risk because they become an endangered species when the devil strike them there are no alternatives in the body it is not God's desire to have just one or two people represented across now there is an election of grace where there are people who are called by reason of God's predeterminate counsel but let me tell you the least among us can still be as mighty as David in the next five minutes there is going to be a mighty impartation listen you can choose to spectate and watch others or you can cry to your maker and say Lord if this is the moment let this be a destiny encounter someone lift up your voice and in the next one minute I don't know how you are going to cry to God Listen to me. I must tell you this before we begin this impartation. Whether you're on the ground, whether you're kneeling, just listen. Hear me. Can I tell you the purity of heart and the desire to glorify Jesus is the biggest attractor of the power of God. The purity of heart and the desire to glorify Jesus not a desire for fame not a desire for competition let me have it too so I can prophesy like the rest let me have it too so no one will mock me the agenda of God is bigger than self-aggrandizement the purity of heart I repeat and the desire to see Jesus glorified he said nevertheless the foundation of the Lord standed sure having this seal the Lord knoweth them that are his and let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity it says but in a great house there are vessels of gold and silver of wood and clay some vessels are unto honor and some vessels are unto dishonor it says if a man will purge himself that man will be a vessel unto honor meet for the master's use I want you to pray one prayer Lord purify my heart purify my heart edit my motives take away the secret desire for competition the secret desire to outshine the secret desire to trample on others the secret desire to be the only celebrity carrying power lord take it out of my life purify my motive someone pray someone pray someone pray Hallelujah. Now, the power of God is coming. I want you to start bringing the people outside. I'm just seeing angelic manifestations right now. And I'm about to speak. There is an opening of the gates. Please, whether you are an usher or not, I want you to just bring those under the anointing here now. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. 
I'm seeing the spirit of revelation, access to light, the mysteries of the kingdom. Where are they? Let it come upon you like the dew of Hamon. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. Receive that mantle. Take that grace. I release you. Hold them please so they don't enjoy themselves. Receive that grace. I empower you by that mantle. The eyes that see, the ears that hear. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, fire upon your life. Let your eyes be washed with eyes out that you may see. Shalagata bakata bakata praskata kash. Kratekata beretos koto basiata. Now I'm praying. Please, I want you to listen. Bring them out. There are people here. One of the end time mantles that is going to be restored to the church is authentic healing ministry. The healing ministry with power that heals. And I sense that there are people here. Some of you have been praying and fasting. Please bring them out. I stretch my hands. That mantle to heal. Take the healing power of Jesus to the nations. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Men and women like Catherine Pullman. Men and women like every Semple McPherson. We reignite that apostolic fire, that revival to heal the sick, to heal the sick, to heal the sick, to heal the sick. Hallelujah. Now hear me. This is a prophetic ministry. Your father is a prophet. And there are many of you who are connected to this vision. But that prophetic mantle has been hovering around you. But it has not landed in your life. I want to release that grace. I believe there are people here who will begin to walk in strange levels of the prophetic. Can I release that mantle upon you? Father, I don't know where they are in this crowd and watching. Everyone called into the prophetic office, the prophetic ministry. I stretch my hands right now. Receive that grace now. Take that up, take that grace now. Men and women, drink of the prophetic fountain. Help this lady, please. Drink of the prophetic fountain. Please help effect. In the name of Jesus, I stir up that prophetic grace. I stir up that prophetic grace. Spring up all wells. Spring up all prophetic wells. Spring up all prophetic wells. In the name of Jesus Christ. like him lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow down every ocean roll to the king of kings we will praise adore From the rising of the sun to the end of every day, praise Adonai. All the nations of the earth. Is there a name like Diolu? D 
Diolu, is it Diolu or something? Who is Diolu? Come. Shalis Kariko Sabranda Katoshka Vredi Gemele. What do you do, sir? You are a pastor. I want to pray for you because the Lord is saying the limitation you have seen in ministry that is about to take it away as a reproach. Take that reproach away. I pray for you, sir. I do not know you, but in the name of Jesus, may the hand of God rest upon you. Take that grace right now. A new season by the Spirit of the living God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Who is... Um, I'm hearing my name. You're my namesake, Joshua. Please make sure you don't run. Let's, we have just a few minutes. I'm, I'm working on extra time. So make sure you don't tell lies. Just come and stand here. You will receive. Bring the person who shouts right now. A loud shout. Loud shout. You are Joshua. I want to pray for you. What is your name, my friend? Help this boy. Huh? What's his name? This gentleman. Your name is Joshua. Help this guy. I declare that the yoke of witchcraft. And I'm, as I'm praying for him, I'm praying for someone. Everything that has tied your life and limited you from advancing. Every altar. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I'm seeing fire. Help this guy. Please help him so he doesn't reach up people. I decree and declare. Right now, in the name of Jesus, be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. I set those altars on fire. I set the help this guy. I set those altars on fire. Hallelujah. Is there a name like Demola? Demola. You are wearing white. Demola. Is there someone like that? Demola. Who is that? What is your name? What do you do? I want to pray for you. Um, you, are, you are destined for greatness. But I'm seeing a serious limitation on your life. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Be delivered right now. Be delivered right now. Be delivered right now. Help him. Be delivered right now. There is a gentleman here. You do Uber. Is it Uber or Bolt? Who is that person? I'm seeing somebody driving a car and the Lord is saying I should pray for the person because there is an anointing that is coming. You do uh, this, um, or what they call it now. Is there a gentleman like that? Who is that? That's what you do? No, no, no. I'm please make sure is, is that what you do because one of you I'm seeing that you are going into real estate God is going to bring somebody it will start just by helping you somebody is saying sell something and yet that's how God will help you and establish you in your destiny I stretch my hands may the grace that lifts and help men rise may that anointing come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ you will go and prosper by the power of the Holy Spirit I'm seeing a lady here, your elder sister is yet to have a child. Your elder sister is yet to have a child. This is what the Lord is revealing to me. Who is that person? Please come. The season has come. Your elder sister, where is she? In United Kingdom. Is that where she is? Where is she? That's what I'm saying. The Lord is saying her, her time has come. In the name of, if she's following or she, wherever she is, in the name of Jesus, we agree. We don't care what the medical situation is. If the Lord has spoken, an anointing is coming upon you for our own sake. Receive that grace now. Receive that anointing right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I use as a point of contact that everyone trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Here at this convention, we decree and declare, may the God of all possibilities visit them. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, I want you two things, two supernatural miracles 
you are trusting God for we release our faith under this corporate anointing open your mouth and begin to make that demand and watch the God of all possibilities to impossible situations go ahead and pray you just obey instructions in the name of Jesus Christ someone is praying what is that that has mocked God in your life you're trusting God to overturn is it a financial situation a marital situation an academic situation a health situation we stand by the privilege of priesthood and the prophetic releasing our faith with you make that petition unto God he said what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest it and thou shalt have it he says to be anxious for nothing but that in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving he said let your request be made known unto God pray ask the God of all possibilities visit me in this area change my story in this area wipe my tears give me a testimony in the name of Jesus give me a testimony visit my father visit my mother visit my wife my husband my children visit my family visit my ministry my business pray one more minute you are praying in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray I shared with you yesterday on the school of faith Ezekiel 37 he said son of man can these bones live again and he said only thou knowest and he said prophesy let me speak over your life the prophetic can be revelatory but the prophetic can be creative it can make what has no business happening to happen in the name of Jesus I stand in partnership with the grace upon the prophet of God in this house to declare over someone every door that has refused to open from this moment forward we declare that door open now shout a loud amen open now open now open now open now in the name of Jesus let me command restoration he said alas master for it was borrowed and he said where fell it there are many people who are in all kinds of situations in need of restoration by the power of the highest I speak to someone between now and the end of March I speak prophetically let there be supernatural restoration supernatural restoration supernatural restoration number three let me pray for you and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren but that was not his story the Bible says the mother cursed him as a result of her pain Jabez but he got to a point where he said oh that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast I want to pray for someone whatever has limited you in the name that is above all names be enlarged right now be enlarged right now I prophesy increase expand to the north expand to the east expand to the south expand to the west in the name of Jesus A man called Job who was once the richest man in the east the Bible says that man went down from grace to grass until he became an object of mockery but in Job chapter 42 and verse 10 the Bible says and God turned again the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends and he said all his former acquaintances who had left him they now began to return and the Bible says everyone brought gifts and a piece of money I declare whoever has left you by reason of the tragedies that have come upon your life I compel them to return with gifts I compel them to return with favor I compel them to return with favor I compel them to return with favor two more impartations and we're done 
Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty let me declare there is a grace for favor it compels men and systems to walk towards your progress wherever you are I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost let the grace for favor rest on you let the grace of favor rest on your business, rest on your ministry, rest on your family. In the name of Jesus. Finally, I want to pray for you. The Bible says, and the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. I want to rebuke the ugly spirit of untimely death that is sweeping from nation to nation, destroying great lives and great potentials. I hope you know that death is beyond the phenomenon. Death is a spirit. According to Revelation, the rider upon the pale horse holding a pair of balances on his hand and his name is death. Death is a spirit. More than just a natural occurrence. And that spirit like all other spirits can answer to the name of Jesus. Therefore I declare it says to deliver them who have been appointed unto death. Anyone here and any family that the devil is already programming that you will not see the end of 2023. Anyone here that in the realm of the spirit, it is almost like a done deal. I declare in the name of Jesus and by the power that raised Christ from the dead, the fullness of your days you will fulfill. The fullness of your days you will fulfill. You will not die, not by the sword, not by accident, not by plane crash, not by kidnapping, not by the activity of wicked men. The Lord preserves your going in, the Lord preserves your coming out. In the name of Jesus. My final charge to you ladies and gentlemen before I leave is that your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ must remain intact in spite of. The Bible says, if our hope is only in this life, it says we are of all men most miserable. Listen very carefully, spare me a few seconds. It matters to Jesus and it matters to your destiny that your ways are right with God. It's a costly assumption to assume that out of the crowd of people here, there might be one or two persons or everybody is saved. I believe that in every meeting and in every gathering, you would always find people in need of Jesus or in need of rededication and restoration. There are people here who, whilst you heard me teach and whilst you saw the demonstration of the Spirit, the Holy Ghost began to speak to you to tell you it is time to make it right with Jesus. Perhaps you were invited this morning or for someone else, for you it is that your life has gone haywire and there is need for restoration. This is my last assignment this morning. I want to lend my voice with the man of God and pray for you. Wherever you are, I'm going to count one to three. You should know by now. There's nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing to be afraid of. This is a very holy spiritual atmosphere that you should not waste. Apostle, I truly want to make it right with Jesus. No pretense. I count one to three. Leave your seat and come and stand here. One. Let's celebrate them as they come. You don't have to kneel, just stand for space. Two. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. Can I join them? Join them, quickly. Join them. Three. Someday, when this life is over, the Bible says, and so we believe that Jesus is returning. And when he does return like he will, it is not going to be the degrees and the certificates or your travel exposure or the kind of money in your bank account. There will be only one credential if you have been joined with his spirit through the experience of the new birth and then rewarding the works of men based on their faithful service. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, it matters that we make the issue of soul winning. If you're a pastor here, listen. Soul winning is not a once in a while thing. 
Many people do not make altar calls because they don't want to look powerless. What if I make an altar call and nobody comes? That's why nobody comes. Because God knows you are not determined enough to go beyond your ego and see people saved. You must be born again. It's a mandate, a command, not a suggestion. I salute all of you who are here. Some of you are crying. There's nothing to be ashamed of. And for someone who is following online from any nation you might be connecting from, or maybe you are watching by way of rebroadcast, it is never too late to make it right with Jesus. Never too late. Never too late. Anything minus Jesus equals to death. Anything minus Jesus equals to defeat and eventual failure. So I celebrate all of you for making this noble decision. May I please request that you lift your right hand above your head as a sign of surrender and say this after me, mean it from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I have heard your voice. I have heard your word. I love you with all my heart. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king i declare that the power of sin of satan of hell and of the grave is broken over my life from today and forever i am a child of god amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these precious ones you are able to save even to the uttermost and I thank you because by the authority of scripture I declare your sins forgiven and I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is destroyed over your life. I empower you to live victorious Christian lives from today. No going back. In Jesus name I pray. Amen and amen. Now you will be given a form. You will notice that the counselors are given to you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Kete branda kata pa kotos koto breke teke neka pa. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.